I'm speaking with Marty Cooper, who was with Motorola almost 30 years, ended up heading research and development in Motorola Mobility, and is the father of cellular. So you fly probably as much as I do. Why did it take the FAA so long to change the rules as far as using devices like iPads, Kindles, whatever, on board aircraft, when it was known for quite a while there was no interference problem. And I think, and Delta, Delta Airlines really led the research and the, the move to change the industry. I interviewed Delta's lead uh, person about this, and I think in my view, it all came to a head when they figured out that pilots were using iPads in the flight deck because the public all of a sudden realized this is all like nonsense. So why do you think it took so long? Is it, you know, in the old analog days where you had a radio that put out six-tenths of a watt and you had a lot of frequency mix potential on airplanes, I could see the issue. But when everything went digital, what's the problem? Well, the problem has never been uh, technical. The problem's always been emotional. Even from the very beginning, when they first uh, had telephones and airplanes, yeah, they, the telephones were put in by a private company, by GE at that time. Yeah, an air cell. And of course GE didn't want cell phones to work. And the Bureau of Standards did studies way back then. Right? Yeah, this is before cellular, and demonstrated that they couldn't measure any interference mm -hmm. between the cell phones and these devices uh, and the uh, radio equipment. But there's always been the fear that perhaps that might happen, uh, and it's been emotional. And I think finally uh, the will of the people has come through, uh, except that we've got a situation now that I call the tyranny of the minority, where a few people are making a lot of noise about how uh, there's people in the next seat are going to be screaming into their phones. I haven't seen anybody screaming into their phones lately, but that's what all of the, the uh, comments to blogs say, and I think that's uh, uh, foolish. Well, the reality is I've been using Skype. You know, Wi-Fi has been on board aircraft for several years now, sure. and the bandwidth is enough that you can communicate. We use a two-way uh, radio over IP network, that all you need is a data connection, and we use Skype. And, you know, they don't even know you're using it. And, and frankly, the FCC hasn't prohibited that. They prohibited cellular access from onboard aircraft. And correct me if I'm wrong, over about 5,000, 10,000 feet, your cellular radio won't work anyway. It will, it, it will work intermittently and certainly yeah. not everywhere. So, uh, no, uh, uh, I think that uh, the solution to the, the best solution to the problem is to let the free market uh, do it. Some of the airlines have said that their uh, customers don't want it. Well, we'll see. It's my view that, uh, that given a choice, uh, people will want to be able to talk at an absolute minimum. If there is the capability of talking from the airplane and they don't permit at least emergency calls, uh, I think it's a travesty. And now we have to define emergency. If, if you uh, <laughs> for, forgot something and you really need to talk to somebody and have them waiting at the airport, why shouldn't you be able to call? That's not a, a, an intrusive kind of call. The intrusive calls are people that talk real loud. And I, I was thinking of a subtitle for this article you're supposed to write. It's not the cell phone dummy, it's the people. How many times have you had of people sitting next to you or two seats away that are talking to each other in really loud voices in the most annoying way and they're doing that without cell phones. So somehow or other it's a question of, of uh, courtesy and rudeness. We have solved that problem. Do you, don't you remember when the cell phones first came out every time you went to movie theater the phone would be ringing? Yeah. And we've learned how to handle those things We'll learn how to handle the cell phones on airplanes, too. They haven't figured out how to handle screaming baby shit on airplanes. There, are, there you go. Uh, seems like uh, every other trip I take, there's a screaming baby. Yeah, which would you rather have, a passenger talking on the phone or the screaming baby? 
Uh, that's a, uh, and there's got to be a way to describe that choice, but the answer is neither one. Neither one. So, do you think, now, I mean, here's what I don't understand. Ten years ago, pre-9-11, we had phones on aircraft. It was called air cell. At every seat, there was a handset. Sure. And on all my transatlantic flights, or a lot of them, they're satellite phones. So, I don't understand what's changed. If everybody could make and did make phone calls then, even Verizon had a deal like 69 cents a minute, as I remember. It wasn't exorbitant. So I don't understand what the problem is if we had phones on aircraft at, aircraft at one point. No, I don't think that there, uh, that there is a problem. Uh, the uh, uh, number of the foreign airlines do have they do now. service today. And I haven't heard a single objection to those things. It, it really is not a manufactured problem. It doesn't really exist, nor do I think that it ever will. And from your engineering background, do you, you know, in Europe still, a lot of the airlines won't let you use your phone until the cabin door is open. And the American carriers, they do. Is there a safety pro a real safety problem? As far as I know, and I do keep track of the technology there is not an interference problem from uh, cell phones or most of the devices that we carry on uh, airplanes, computers. So people are being extra safe, right? Uh, and I'm not sure that that's a bad thing. Marty Cooper, thanks very much. This has been a pleasure. Great pleasure.